In this question, the first box has a volume of 320 cubic meters, and this could be obtained through various different possible cases of exact dimensions. For example, the box could be 16 by 2 by 10, or 8 by 4 by 10. But there is something interesting about this question. The correct answer evidently doesn't depend on the exact dimensions of the first box, because we don't know what they are, and there is a single definitive correct answer to this question. This type of situation crops up frequently on GMAT questions. We are dealing with a range of possible cases and an outcome that is the same for all the cases. When this is true, we are free to choose any particular case we want for our own convenience. For example, since we are going to be taking a half, a half, and a quarter, we can imagine a box that has a volume and dimensions of these. Then the volume of the second box is going to be a half of eight, a half of 10 and a quarter of four, which we can calculate quite easily to give us a volume of 20. Therefore, the correct answer is A. This technique may seem too good to be true, or it might strike you as clear enough, but you doubt that you'll be able to replicate it on other questions. The key is, before automatically jumping into algebra, to consider the range of possible cases. Analysis by cases is critical in data sufficiency questions, we'll see, and it's useful anywhere logical thinking is required. It's a useful step in most questions to consider briefly what the range of possible cases is for the question. Sometimes you'll find that you can choose any of those possible cases, or you can choose two cases and compare them.